Hello, everyone, and welcome to Stoked, the ultimate Star Trek online podcast. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Hey there, J-Man. Hey, you look a little sleepy there, Christopher. <laughs> I am a little sleepy. <laughs> I, uh, good news, my wife had our second child the other day. Like all two right. days ago or something. It's all kind of runs together. Yeah. It's all kind of blurred together, <laughs> and... You know, that means as the dad now, my job is to watch our, our oldest son, mm-hmm. take care of all the stuff around It's like a two-year-old, right? Yeah. So just under two? Oh, man, am I sleepy. Yeah. Excited, though, to have a new Star Trek fan in the house. Yeah. That's exciting. Um, <laughs> you like that? Her first toy will be a little, like, Enterprise-shaped rattle <laughs> a little or Mr. something. Spock, yeah, with that, yeah. Now, we've got uh, some some crashy equipment on us today, so yeah. what we ended up doing is we've already had uh, a, re- a failed recording on us, so we're going to go ahead and just skip over the news this week, mm-hmm. but there is some news. Yeah, there's a little bit to talk about. There was an update on the Garumbo. We've got some other stuff that, you know, danced all said stuff, that kind of stuff. Yeah. There's also, you know, the uh, January edition of the Ask Cryptic. Uh, which actually has some good info in it. We've got all of that over in our show notes, along yeah. with some information on the new remastering several missions that are going to be coming out. Man, I wish... We I, don't have time to talk about it. I wish we could have gotten that into this episode. You guys, I know we say this like almost every episode now, but this is a big reason to watch live, because the live peep, the live peeps have already seen all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, Including the failed recording we did earlier. Yeah, the recording is just no good, so we can't, we can't include it in this episode. Mm-hmm. So go to the show notes to get some of our notes on that. Mm-hmm. But with all of that said, let's jump into community feedback. And welcome to the community feedback segment. I'm excited about this one because it's been a hot topic, especially in our community. Uh, anybody that's been watching along with Stoked, you know, this is something that you actually brought up uh, two or three episodes back. Yeah, yeah. And I was when I brought it up, I was mainly thinking just the Foundry stuff. Yes, but it's kind of grown beyond that. And some of our fans have picked it up, even started threads in the Stoke forums. Cool. What I'm talking about now is basically a community portal, either a website that's independently run, I think ideally run by Cryptic, though, as part of their website. Yeah, maybe the content is supplied from independent sources and mm-hmm. then it's aggregated by through cryptic or you almost want that because you want it to have almost a curated polish to it i would think absolutely but that's kind of what we're asking you what major features does a stow community portal need and we're talking about something that pulls in foundry resources pulls in media multimedia content like this pulls in news articles the primary purpose i think of, of the idea of a community portal is just to allow the community to expand and grow beyond its current borders cryptic has a news feed now but it's obviously not an adequate thing when you take mm-hmm. into consideration the foundry and that's my big requirement for a stoke community portal would be so this is the feature that you require my 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 you my requirement and i want to hear your guys' so send us send your thoughts in at stoked at jupiterbroadcasting.com but mm-hmm. my big requirement is Help me find really good Foundry content and give me a way to take that Foundry content into game. Even if it's just the the ST dash. If that's number. what it has to be. If it's a community effort, then that's what it has to be. Mm-hmm. What about you? Well, uh, first of all, that's really good, and I think that it would be great if something if a community site could encourage that. You know how hardcore I am about the Foundry. Um, but my personal feeling is that it needs to go beyond just the content of the game itself and kind of embrace the people that make that content. I think that uh, as a community portal, it needs to feature regularly updated feeds or features that bring in content from external sources like Stow Wiki yeah. or Starbase UGC yeah, let's or Trek Radio or mm-hmm. all these different other cool little communities that exist out there mm-hmm. and kind of incorporate them into the, a central point. Yeah, I think that the best feature that they could do is have some sort of regularly updated RSS. I'm picturing a page with like squares that this is a Trek Radio square sure. and this is a Stow Wiki square. And maybe a squ- maybe a, you know latest content ad- ad- mm-hmm. added. Is it part Wiki you think? Because you have Stow Wiki, is it something that could just could you could you extend an existing Wiki infrastructure? I think theoretically, but you know the the main problem with wikis is getting people on board 
to right. communicate with each other right, right. away, right. and then administrating it to make sure that it's not filled with and, a bunch of crap. And for your casual gamers out there, a wiki is sort of an investment they're maybe not willing to make, and so yeah. you almost want something that, that abstracts all that data That's, into a nice I UI. I think one of the most important things of a community portal is you have to make it available yeah. and accessible to the yeah. lowest common denominator. Well, let us know what you think. Like I said, stoked at jupiterbroadcasting.com is the place to send your ideas and your feedback, and then mm -hmm. we'll feature that in a future episode of yep. Stoked. We sure will. All right, J-Man, let's get mathed. Today we're going to be talking about engines, because after all, without engines, we wouldn't have engineers. And what a sad, sad world we would live in without Scotty and Jordy and O'Brien and Trip. Well, I could probably live in a world without Trip. But anyway, I'm going to show you briefly how to pick the right engine for your ship and your spec, and a couple engine-related tactics that maybe not everybody out there knows about. Now, first off, standard engine variants come in three different flavors. First off is the impulse engine. This is just a standard engine, a baseline. The next type is a hyper impulse. Now these are efficient at high energy levels. What that actually means is that when you set your engine power above about a 60, you begin getting extra energy from this specific type of engine. Conversely, there's also the combat impulse, which does the same at low power levels. When your engines are set below about a rank of 40, you begin to gain extra engine energy. Now up front, just to get this out of the way, I gotta tell you flat out, the impulse engine, the baseline engine, is worthless. There's no reason to use it. They seem to have the exact same stat scaling as the other two types, but never grant you additional energy. And energy is good. So your choice should be based primarily on where your engine power is typically when you're flying around. If it's high, go with a hyper impulse, and if it's low, go combat. Now, there are a few noteworthy exceptions to this. Most prominently is the efficient engine that you can get from doing PvE missions in about the Lieutenant Commander range. This specific piece of ship equipment actually adds an extra 5 energy to your weapons, shields, and auxiliary. It's an incredible piece of equipment, and I still know several VAs that have stuck with this piece of equipment through their entire career due to this extra energy. Their ships are a little slower, but speed rarely impacts your tactics in PvE encounters. A couple of the other primary exceptions to this are the Borg and Aegis set pieces, but I'm not going to discuss those today. I'm saving those up for a future mass segment that will be dedicated entirely to those specific sets. So when talking about the speed of your engine, that actually brings me to the, my next primary point. The only real difference between ranks of engines is that the higher mark engines give you more speed and usually more turning power. So if you have a lower mark engine with a fatty bonus that you just adore, like the aforementioned efficient engine, don't feel like you have to give it up. As long as you can live with the reduced maneuverability, the choice is yours. After you've chosen your base type of engine, which I said earlier should either be hyper or combat, it's time to look at some of the various bonuses that each type have attached to them. Full, which increases your full impulse speed, speed, which increases your standard flight speed, and turn, which slightly buffs your base turn rate. As I've mentioned previously, I'm of the opinion that speed very rarely matters in PvE combat. I know there are times in PvP where running away is a great tactic, and if that's one of yours, then by all means go for a speed bonus of some sort, especially since this modifier can be further multiplied by buffs such as evasive maneuvers. For most folks, however, I think it'd be safe to recommend an engine with a turn rate bonus. Even if you're in a highly maneuverable ship like an escort or a bird of prey, a higher turning rate is always a good thing. Also, if the numbers are right on the tooltips, and there is absolutely no guarantee of that, engines with turn rate improvements have a more profound impact on your actual turning speed than an RCS engineering console ever would. So, you've equipped the right engine, you've shopped around for the perfect bonuses, and now you're ready to take this baby for a joyride. Well, let's talk about an engine-based tactic that could save your aft in PvP combat. It's a common buff stacking approach that is sometimes called ludicrous speed, because it is crazy fast. This tactic involves firing off every buff you can that offers a raw speed boost and or an increase in your engine energy, and then firing off any buffs that offer a percentage boost on top of that. The reason this tactic calls for the specific order of things is that these raw speed boosts are an actual numeric increase in your overall speed, while the percentage boosts actually modify whatever your current speed is by a percentage, and 20% of 100 is more than 20% of 50. You follow? Now, as an added 
bonus to this tactic. There's a new consumable item known as a deuterium surplus that can be obtained by completing a daily mission in the Alhina system in Eta Eridani. These suckers are pretty much evasive maneuver batteries. Pretty darn awesome. So you combine all these boosts and you'll find yourself zipping across the map so quickly that turning will probably be out of the question. If you're not careful, you will fly her apart. Fire apart then! Math!